Hello everyone, it's Jack and Dave. Hello. Once again, we're here downstairs and today we are taking a look at our exclusive P-Class locomotive. We are the Hatton's original P-Class in double O gauge. This is another one like the Andrew Barker we've really wanted to talk a bit more in detail about for a long time, isn't it? So it's really fun to have all these out on the table to show you. And um, we've had a couple of questions already via social media um, that we're going to cover today. I'm going to give you all the history of the loco, all the details about the model. We've got some great clips to show you this time as well. And um, yeah, feel free to add your questions into the chat. I, as always, am right here to answer your questions on the computer. So and I've got my trusty tools ready to show you how to get inside the locomotive, whether you want to maintain it or fit a digital decoder. Brilliant. So where should we begin? Let's go There's, into the history, I think. It's, it's a really interesting place to begin, to be honest. There's such an iconic design of tank locomotive. And the history of these is there was actually only eight locomotives built, two in 1909 and six in 1910. And there were two slightly different designs, the first to add slightly higher tanks and a higher cab. So there is a little bit of difference in there, and that is covered in the models as well. It's interesting for a class that was so small that there was actually that variation at all, isn't it? It was. It looks like they built two prototypes and then decided to make a couple of minor changes and introduce six more with very similar, very similar designs, but a couple of little changes there. So originally they were introduced for passenger traffic. One of the main things they started off was what's called an auto train service. So you'd have a coach that also has a cab at the back of it. Right. So you can drive from either the locomotive or the coach instead of having to run your locomotive round onto a different end. It's a really early form of what we know now as a multiple unit. Yeah. And you see them all over the UK's railways. This was one of the earliest modern multiple units you well, could get. A few companies were kind of trying to get on that act, weren't they? Because I were. know that the they GWR were. did it with the 14XX. And there was a few other companies that tried to do auto trains for a and while, this, weren't there? This really was one of the first, just in the Edwardian era, that's what the design was for. However, they didn't quite have the power to handle it. Yeah. Because of the small size, they did cram a lot into that space, but just not quite enough to be able to move passenger coaches around. So they became absolutely found a niche on shunting duties and station pilot duties and mainly used in dockyards and that sort of area all around the southeast. So they really came into their own once they found that perfect job. It wasn't quite what they were built for, but it was the perfect job that was made for them. Yeah. They sort of found the steps a bit later in life, didn't they, really? Yes. Which yeah. is quite interesting. They kind of they, they were almost a bit useless for their original intended purpose, but there was a job there for them, and they did see a lot of work, and, really. And they completely grew into it straight away. They were absolutely perfect for it, being free steaming, easy to use locomotives. And with such a small wheelbase as well, they were capable of going pretty much anywhere, hence they were used on dockyards and dock sites. In fact, actually, they were that useful for dockyard working. Two of them went to France in World War I, Right, and we've even replicated Beloit, Beloit these, haven't we? And I apologise for my French pronunciation. Nice attempt there. That's not right. <laughs> but um, these are the ROD examples that Jack has there. And these were used by the Railway Operating Division from 1915 till 1916. So two of the P's put their little part into the, into the war effort there as well. So helping out the country in its time of need. But they really did come into the road in that sort of 1910s, 1920s period. When the Southern Railway was formed in 1923, they were still just as useful for that task. They survived right up into British Railways into the early 1960s, still doing that job, doing the shunting, the station pilot duties, absolutely perfect for that design. Well, that the reason they survived so long was their lightweight, wasn't it? Because they were yes. able to be used on a lot of the smaller branch lines where there was weight and loading restrictions and stuff like that. And amazingly, these, like the Andrew Barclays, these even survived into the industrial era, didn't they, past the end of steam? They did. A number of them were sold into industrial use with um, Pioneer 2 at the front there. That was used at the Bowaters paper mill in Surrey. So they did go into that sort of industry as well, but where, the, where again these locos made another name for themselves was preservation. Absolutely. With them being sold, to, four of them surviving now, and they were sold, three of them are at the Bluebell Railway, and one of them is at the Kenton East Sussex Railway. And they are very iconic locomotives as part of the Bluebell Railway's history. A lot of them were named when we entered preservation. We have Primrose on the table there. 
but there was also Blue Bell as well. And then there was another locomotive, number 27, that was in the SECR green livery at the time. So in the early years of railway preservation, these P's were one of the mainstays of keeping that going. So their, their importance in history just carried on. And I, the I, end I, of I suppose, railways. again, like the Andrew Barclay we spoke about the other day, it's something that's been a really useful engine, yes. for loss yeah. of a better phrase, bit of Thomas the Tank Engine there for you, uh, the, for the preservation railways, just because of the fact that they are so small and cheap and easy to run, because that's what's important on a heritage that's, railway, really, isn't that's it? That's it. I believe there's a few still in steam at the moment, but the rest are being overhauled, so they come back into service. They're, they're never really out of fashion and never really out of use. They're that useful and dependable and cheap that's and it. easy to run. And they're absolutely gorgeous things, aren't they? I mean, you can't in deny just how amazing these things look. I've got a great clip that will pop on screen for you right now. In um, real life and in model form, they are what a lot of people think as the, when you think of a tank engine, a really nicely designed tank engine, this is what you think of, Yeah. really. And the sort of characterful design there, some of the exquisite liveries, we've really managed to hone down on the Hatton's original model as well. Some of the intricate lining on the SCCR version, the BR livery, as we saw there just on the clip coming through, two completely contrasting liveries, but both giving their own individual styles to the locomotive too. And again, with a class of eight locos, you don't think there'd be that much variation in them, but there's actually quite a lot of liveries carried. There's a few different greens and blacks carried by the class. So you can again find one that's suitable for you. The liveries here cover all the eras from the 1910s until current preservation. So you've got a hundred years of history there for a Southern Railway tank locomotive to, to put on your layout. It's again like the AB, isn't it? It's There's so much operational yes, opportunity for these things. Despite absolutely. being such a small class and not really finding their feet for quite a while, they did very well for themselves. That's certainly it. Who have we got to say hello to? Quite a few guys already on stream. <laughs> We've got to see you here, guys. Williams, uh, sorry if I'm saying this wrong. We've got William Sutar says hello. Uh, hello. Ono Mulder joins us once again. Hello again, Ono. Uh, Pirette 012 says awesome and thumbs up. Uh, Glad you like it. Jack 100 says it's cool. Uh, Collins Engage says hi. Uh, we've got Marius Musig here again saying oh, hi. Fantastic. Hello again. Uh, that scrapped A1 says hi there. Hello. Um, Marius Musig asks, can we show all the different liveries and say which is our favourite? Right, we've got a clip here for you. There's all the different liveries on screen right now in one handy shot for you. Yes, but there's, in terms there's, of favourite... Oh, I don't know. I mean, there's 10 models currently available. 16 have been produced, but some have sold out. And as you can see there, there's 10 currently available. For me, it has to be the SCCR Line Green. You can see there in the top left and the bottom right just because of the intricateness of the line delivery there. It really does go down to the steam reverse of being fully lined out as well as the frames and the lining on there. So that for me, just that quality of finish with the polished brass dome as well, just really, really just Why did you have to say that? Because I was going to say that. Well, I, I, I answered <laughs> first, I'm afraid, Jack. I'm sorry I, I took that one from you. I'm going to go for my second favourite then, the ROD, because I just find it fascinating that such a delicate and intricate little locomotive headed all the way into war and, yes. like you say, served the country in its time of need. And it's just, it's weirdly just really suits the loco, I think. It, it, it's, you know, it's got that classic green finish which they wore pretty much throughout their lives in various uh, places, but it just looks right doesn't it they do and a little factoid for you there as Ooh, well go on. is one of them is being back since now one of the locomotives that went was number 753 and this went over in 1915 and returned in 1916 as you can see on the camera there now that did return to france in 2009 in delivery seen on the right there and it's full original southeastern chatham lined green livery so to commemorate almost 100 years since its original journey had taken place, it went in 1915 as per so, but went back in 2009. And again, it's absolutely fascinating that the real locomotive that carried out those duties is still with us and can still make that journey across it's the waves and yeah. help recreate a part of history. 
interesting factoid for you there. I never knew that myself. And it's also great for those of you who don't have a, a UK layout, maybe have a continental layout. They did get into Europe in the 1910s and in the 2000s as well. So a great opportunity for continental modelers. Well, there's a lot of guys out there getting into the World War era modeling now, isn't there? So yes. there's plenty of opportunities for these to run on that as well. Certainly. Right, so we've got a few more guys saying hi, hello, hi. Jack, Jack 100, uh, Ben Davis says hello, uh, 700 Shunter says hello from Australia, hello. Hello. Uh, that Scrap Day 1 asks how much do they cost, so all of these variations that you see on the table right now, they're available for £99 each, but we do also have a special uh, bargain bundle offer, which you can currently buy, which uses number 31556 five, five, in BR Black. And you get a trio of um, uh, hopper wagons to go along with that. And that's available for a much discounted price over the RRP of all those products together. So there's a couple of options for you there to purchase. And all of these are available to order right now from our website as well. There is a link in the description below. So after the live stream, do take a look if one or more of them take your fancy. That's it. Um, Marius asks, what about the Bluebell Blue? And I think some of uh, our eagle-eyed yes. viewers have seen it's, it in the background it's there. It's remained on the shelf so far. I will put it into shot there. I think a few people have uh, noticed that in the previous live streams that we've done, that they keep spying it in the background. But it's a lovely livery Bluebell, isn't it? And um, this model um, did sell out very quickly because it, it is just is so popular. I mean, it, it's, I mean, as you can see there, it is just absolutely gorgeous. And with it being such an iconic part of the Blue Bell Railway and such an important aspect of that line, which was in sport, important for preservation railways in general, it did just fly off the shelves. So unfortunately, it did uh, go rather quickly, that one. But you can still sometimes pick them up yeah, if you're keep, lucky on the pre-owned. So. Keep an eye out. They do come available from time to time. But again, it is a really eye-catching livery. But we also do have 10 other eye-catching liveries available. That's it. There's still plenty. Too. And even if you want to model Bluebell operations, you can use one of the SECR livery editions that we've got, or Primrose as well. So there is a lot of opportunities for the there preserved modeler out there. I think we've got to open one up. Go for it. I think it's time. You, I think you're it's desperate time. to get your tools time for out, my aren't you? trusty tools to come into use. <laughs> so we shall get those ready. Now, this is for anyone who is either fitting the locomotive with a digital decoder, or wants to get inside to fit a crew or digital sound, or just wants to have a look inside, really. Again, they're pretty low maintenance, these, so you won't need to carry out any any over-regular oiling, so to speak. We'll switch over to get, the handy I will get there. this ready. So, as we can see here, I've got my trusty screwdriver to hand, and just to the sides of each coupling are four screws. And that is all we need to take out. So I'll just do that now. With this today, we won't need any tweezers, any clips. We just need a cross-headed screwdriver and a sturdy pair of hands. It really is quite an easy fit, the P-Class, isn't it? Because it, it does really just is. separate. All you need to do is unscrew it, separate it up. There isn't a lot of stuff to be that mindful of in terms of detail and parts that may snap off, is there? So it's quite a... It's, they, quite, it's they a are, nice beginner DCC fit, isn't it? They are very highly detailed on under the chassis and around the wheels, so do take care on some of the parts. But as Jack said, they are robust as well, so you can touch it without any fear of any major parts coming off straight in your hands. But as ever with any digital fit, we do advise just a little bit of caution and sensibility, so to speak, just to make sure that you don't hit any any parts you shouldn't. I'm just coming up to the last screw there now. And for those of you timing me as well, if you are, you'll notice that it doesn't take a million years to remove the body from one of these either. So it's a really quick, really easy fit. We'll have to get the this. stopwatch out time, won't we? We will indeed. Like a... I think we'll have to start a, a league table. Yeah. So the chassis is now separated and that pulls away as per so. Sorry, I've just got the coupling catching there. That will come away, or at least it should. There we are. And that then separates into the chassis unit. And you can just see the decoder socket at the, f at the side there. With six pin decoder socket with a blanking plate currently in there. And then the locomotive's five pole motor 
in there as well. But you can really see from there just how low profile this mechanism is, but it is, we must stress that it is an incredibly powerful motor that we use in this as well. There's no issues at all in the running of these locomotives on gradients over point work or even hauling quite a few coaches or wagons. It's like with our little ABs, they pack a bit of a punch even though they're quite a tiny <coughs> thing. They do indeed, although the real life locomotives were initially known as a little underpowered, it's not a problem we've got in the 00 scale locomotive. We've had them up to about five or six carriages on test, which is far more than you'll see. And you can see it there hauling a rake of two coaches, more traditional for this locomotive, but it's going straight up the gradient on the track. There are no issues whatsoever. And again, we have, we have tested them on a lot more than this, but a more realistic rake there for these locos. And that's what you can see them on during the actual 1950s and 1960s, but also in preservation as well. These locomotives are used on services such as this, a small passenger rake at a, at a special event or on a smaller railway hauling a couple of coaches or shunting, shunting a few wagons. That's it. I mean, as well, like we talked about with the Andrew Barkley in our last stream, we have designed these so that the motor is almost over, it, it, it overcompensates so that if you want to, you can run yes. it with a lot of wagons or a lot of coaches. Obviously, as Dave's just said, in real life, realistically, they were only ever running with one or two coaches due to the fact that in real life, they were quite underpowered little things. But they did do a lot of shunting duties with little rakes of wagons and all sorts of things, really. And the model is absolutely capable of whatever you want to throw at it, really. And again, with that small wheelbase and other matters in there as well. The perfect down to a crawl for shunting operations. Oh, they do run at a very slow speed and all the operational availability is there for you. They can run through point work. We can see there the ROD example hauling a couple of war well wagons away. Suitable war scenario there. There actually. you go. <laughs> a good wartime setup and they do look great just handling a little bit of shunting on your layout. Again, they'll work through live or dead frog point work and fully operational and the NEM couplings there as well do pivot slightly to go around some of your tighter curves they'll have absolutely no issues running through first radius curves as well as per what you'd expect with a dockyard shunter so to speak so they really are a capable and reliable performer yeah it's something that I've always been remarkably impressed by with these is just yes. how well they run we've seen it obviously on our chest track which is really designed to stress locomotives i must point that out with the bits of um you know tight track work on there and big intro frog we points do and like gradients. To we love to push them as much as we can and there was never a problem on there we've had them out at a lot of exhibitions too and was always been great feedback and obviously these have been out for some time now so we've had a lot of great feedback from customers on their layouts too so the main models came in in sort of early 2018 and we've we did do a second batch then as well a second batch of the originals p class was made later in the year including the rod versions so deliveries are coming through and as i said we've had some great feedback on them so far as well that's one thing that we did get a question about on facebook i believe it was callum from sdjr 7 f 88 oh. asked about whether we might produce some further wartime liveries or other liveries of the p-class in the future and um we, that's you know we'll never say never to produce in more if there's any liveries that we've not covered or something that you'd particularly like to see or something that's sold out that you might want to see another run of do let us know either in the comments below or do get in touch with our special email address for this sort of thing, which is ideasahattons.co.uk. Uh, that goes straight to our development team and they will get your thoughts directly and it does all get taken on board for future. Yes, and all the major variations are currently available, the main liveries carried by the class, but there were some unique and one-off liveries in there too, that some we have covered and some we haven't so far. So if you would like to see that, as Jack said, do get in touch. Right. I think I need to talk a little bit more about the little details on this locomotive You've got because to they're look just up close and personal. Some of the stuff on this is unbelievable. I mean, all of the it. I, I love. Yeah, you, you feel like you have to handle them very carefully. But as we said, they are very robust, so you're not really in too much danger of snapping stuff off. You just need to take a little bit of care, as you would of any locomotive, really. Yes. But we've got all these separately fitted handrails. I will cut to a, a close up shot in a second for you guys. But we've um, we've got all the separately fitted handrails on the on the tanks and on the sides of the cab there. We've even got the little um, latches for the doors. Is that on there? And then we've got 
all of the equipment on the side there. So Steam reverse, reverse fully lined on the SECR version as well. Really down to millimetre thick, if not slightly thinner, but lining there too. There's one thing I'll show you on the close-up now is the cab interior, which is really quite remarkable. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult to see on the camera there, but it, in real life, you can especially see just how much we've been able to pick out in all the right colours and how much equipment is in there. And obviously in real life, they were quite a camped crab for the, uh, camped crab? Cramped <laughs> cab for the, sta uh, the locomotive staff. And quite often they'd be seen sort of hanging out of the uh, side of the loco, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, a lot of pictures we've seen are of the crew sort of more out of the cab than in. <laughs> and again, if you want to recreate that in double O scale, we do sell crew specifically for the P classes separately. Again, check out the link in the description for those, but they come, they do require painting but they are available either in an Edwardian outfit or a more modern outfit for us, such as a preserved line. Yeah, and like we were just saying about them being more out than in, we've actually designed them to be in a realistic pose for this locomotive, so they are sort of craning yes. out a little bit yeah. to get a better view, and purely because there isn't that much room inside there. Right, so let's head back to the chat and see what everyone's talking about today. Um, right. Um... Do, do, do. Sorry, guys, I'm just going to get back up the comments here. Um, Andrew Diak, uh, sorry if that was said wrong, he says, are you going to re-release the Pride of Sussex? Um, potentially, that might be something we could look at in the future. Um, like I said before, if you want to get in touch um, through the usual methods, we can uh, definitely consider that. Yeah. Um, Blue Bell Model Railway says, can't go wrong with the SECR Blue Bell Rivery. I may have a few. <laughs> Fantastic. It sounds like if he's a Blue Bell Model Railway, it sounds like he's got the perfect home for a few of them you, already. You can't be without a few of these, can you? Uh, Garvin Neely uh, says, hello, and thanks for the guide. Happy uh, to be here. As said, if you have any questions at all regarding the P-Class, do let us know while we're here. Um, ben Davis says, I've got some of the Hatton's P-Classes, Blue Belt and Primrose. They're my favourite model of all time. Oh. This is a great video as always, Hatton's and the P-Class. Uh, you made us an amazing model. Really glad to hear it. Thank made you up very that you've much. Yours, so. To be honest, we, we feel exactly the same way, don't I love we? It too much. <laughs> I, I can't stop looking at them at the moment. They're such a beautiful locomotive. Even now, I still, every time I see one, I just have to spend a bit of time with That's it. That's it. If, if I walk past one on one of the stock shows, my neck will just twist as an instinct now, you know. It's, it's just can't, natural, can't isn't it? it? Can't avoid it. Um, the 700 Shunter asks, are you going to create a tender locomotive for your Hatton's range in the future? And if so, what region would it be from? We've got plenty of things, plenty of ideas, yeah. plenty of things that we might consider for the future, but there's nothing obviously we can talk about here, unfortunately. But like we said, just get in touch. If there's any ideas that you've got, let us know. Um, Connor C says, how do you add the crew to the P-Class? So it's not actually that bad of a job, is it really? Yeah, I shall. I'll pop over, over onto here, the other camera. If you, if you like. So, there are two different parts of the body. You will see here that there is a separate piece and this unscrews as per so using these screws. This will lower the cab out. So the actual chassis block there will lower out itself and that will come straight away and then you'll have the cab interior there, the cab floor and you can insert crew as you wish. Now you can take the doors away as well should you wish to do so or you can leave them in at your preference. And that's also the way to fit digital sound to the locomotive as well, should you wish to do that. There is space within there to fit a decoder. Sorry, no, the speaker is within the tanks. However, you do have to fit the decoder within the cab if you are fitting digital sound to the locomotives. So again, it's not a bad operation on your loco really to do. It's quite a simple affair. It's, it's not, and the real life locomotives again do have, have quite a bark for the bite, so to speak. They, they do have a real grunt of an exhaust. You wouldn't think it was such a small locomotive, but they do make the presence felt really well. Oh yeah. So recreating that sound in double O gauge, is, it just adds that extra little it's dimension to it. It's almost a bit like the Terrier, isn't it? Which a couple of people have been mentioning in, in the chat. Um, they, are, they sometimes do get mixed up, the Terrier and the P-Class, don't they? Because they're very similar, tiny, quite intricate, cute little locomotives this, aren't they so this really was the southeastern chatham railways attempt at making a terrier which had been designed by the london brighton and south coast railway so this was their go at it so to speak and when you put the two side by side you can really start to see the differences they're not quite as chalk as cheese as they may have been 
but at the same time they do have their own distinct characteristics yeah. there as well and quite ironically as well it's one terrier did end up in the southeastern chatham railway it did livery. yeah so there was only one but for those of you who really like this very intricate lined green livery you can have a terrier and the p-class and again if you want to on a preservation scenario you can certainly have the two running together they have done on the kenton east sussex railway on the bluebell railway as well and even further afield so if you want to put the two different types together and maybe decide which is which is best or whichever you prefer that's the great opportunity to do it well if you're a pre-grouping modeler or a preserved modeler there's just a bounty of things at the moment really with our p class and then the hornby terrier and stuff like the hornby h class if you want a full fleet of secr stuff you've got it all there Certainly. and there's even the coaches and the wagons out there for it now so it's a great time to be in that part of the market and like i say preservation you can run all sorts it is and with such an intricate livery there with that amount of lining as well it's it's so hard to resist that it it really is but i've got to admit for me that <laughs> some of the what you could call more plain liveries are still really nice and add a lot of character, such as the BR Black. Okay, you've got the crest and the number and not a lot more, but that really is a working locomotive. It then. really is, yeah. So it really fulfills both roles. Uh, whether but you want even to... even with that, it still maintains all of that detail and intricacy yes. of the pre of the more colourful examples. You've still got loads of things picked out in different colours and all the handrails and all the separately fit apart, and it just adds a little bit of an extra dimension doesn't and it some of the variations here as well go beyond livery where there are i will pull up a couple for you there you'll be able to see the alternative types of buffers including the lined buffers on the secr model there with the stepped buffers on number 753 and then on number 5753 you will see what's called the bottle buffers at the front you really can't see the difference there so can't that you? is one of the many tooling variations we've got available including the usual variations such as smoke box door numbers on BR liveries, different, we mentioned before, the different cab sizes and the different tank heights they're catered for in this model as well. The whole sort of P-class suite of differences. There's even is, things is like different window types, isn't there? Because we've yes. got the clear sort of round windows on this example, and then the BR ones actually have um, little grates over the back of the windows, don't they, to protect yep. the glass? I shall pull that up when I find two appropriate ones. There Let's we are. To the camera there. So you can see the the one on the right does have those little window grates, whereas on the left it's um, a clear glass. So it was just added in the uh, later in their lives to make sure that the glass stayed uh, protected. Yes. But um, I'll cut to a little clip that we've got of the buffer beam detail there for you in a bit more high resolution so you really can see just the amount of detail that is present on these like Dave's just pointed out the buffers which are sprung by the way and you've got all the extra uh, lamp brackets and pipe work and there is a detail pack that we have there with this is model isn't there which a detail pack Dave I'll pull that up and find this, for us. this is something I'm especially proud of as and really do like because this is one of the most comprehensive detailing packs you will ever see. It is and amazing how much you get in this. This includes alternative buffers for examples that require them, which are the SCCR examples. Should you wish to change the buffers between the different points of the lives, you're more than capable of doing that. But also included in there are a couple of head code discs. Now this indicates which service and which train the locomotives have been used on at the time and these are etched so these are included for you to fit to your own locos as well as a coupling in there as well for the front a screw coupling and finally as well you even get a headlamp a little yellow southern railway style headlamp too so everything you need to detail this locomotive further is already included you don't need to buy any further bits and pieces and again just a normal plastic glue there will do the trick for you as ever use little rather than more sparingly maybe, is always a good apply option with a cocktail stick or something along those lines but you can really just open it up and open the bag and finish the model off it's bits like the head code discs and the buffers it's quite unusual to see in a detailing pack isn't it it's not something that you usually get with a locomotive it is and there's also the oil can there as well which mainly were carried on the locomotives instead of having to go back to depot and find one they found it was just easier to hang it on the locomotive yeah. really so they went along for a ride a lot of the photos we've seen of these locomotives had those on if anything it's more often than not 
to be quite honest. So again, just that little characterful, last little finishing touch that you can add to these. Just it is by amazing how those little details really do add the extra dimension to them, though. It does completely change how they look. Just by opening the detailing bag. Simple job to do as well. All right. So as we were talking about the Terrier before, Andrew Weaver said, um, uh, if we could have a look at one compared to a Terrier. We don't have one to hand right now, unfortunately, but if that is something you'd like us to do a video on where we could run both of them together in a little running session, let us know. That's maybe something we can have a look at. Yeah. Um, ooh, Tony Daly just mentioned that a uh, couple of minor issues with the camera he was seeing, I think, with the product camera. So sorry if there was an issue there, Tony, but it uh, looks like it's working okay now anyway. Uh, Jack100 says, how much is the Class 121 behind you on the shelf? Um, we've got quite a few ver varieties of the 121 still in stock, and there's been some new versions in from Dapol recently. Yes. And they're available from just... 89? 89. 89. So for an entire train for your layout and such a, a great detailed thing, they really are an amazing price. And if you do want to know more about it, we did do a live stream on the 121 specifically yes. uh, recently. So go back on our channel, uh, check it out below and you can find out more about it. And we have done other videos on the Class 121 as well. So loads of information out there about those. Um, Marius, he's given us all these tricky questions again. Oh. He's asked a couple, um, which is our favorite LMS or, well, which is our favorite LMS and our favorite GWR tank loco? Ooh. So now you've got a, a double pronged one there. Now that's a tricky one. I'm going to have to go for the Ivert 262 tank. Nice for the LMS and for the Great Western I think the 7200 the gigantic 282 tank locomotive. Oh god they're massive things aren't one they? One of the biggest ever made for the UK nice railway choice. system tank engine wise and a complete contrast to the P we have here they probably get about four P's in the same size <laughs> as one of those tank engines but these really do come down to the size of one of the smallest locomotives available slightly larger than our Andrew Barclay but for an 060, it doesn't really get smaller than the P class. And that makes them perfect for those shunting layouts and dockyard scenes as we as we covered before. I think for GWR, I'm going to have to pick the 14XX. Ooh, good point. So, good you point. know, we've still, they're just a lovely looking loco. It's kind of similar kind of thing. It's obviously quite a bit bigger than a P class, but they've still got that nice little intricacy to them. Lovely looking things. Obviously quite a popular one out there for a lot of modelers and in preservation they're quite popular. I, just, I think, believe there's one on the Seven Valley, isn't there? I believe and so, A yes. couple of others out there. And we do still have models of the 14XX available um, on our website as well if you're after one of those. And if you want to know more about that one, uh, let us know. And Certainly. Or if you wanted to know more about the, the big old uh, one that you the just mentioned. XX, <laughs> we do have those available as well. Right, so Daniel14Doc says hi. Hi. Uh, do, 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 do. We've got Flying Scott says, oh dear, what did I miss? We, if you Feel free to wind back the live stream to the start and you can check out what we've already talked about. We've just talked a little bit about the history of the class. Uh, if you've only just joined us and we've talked a bit about the specs, I had a look at them close up and Dave's had a route around inside of one over there and showed you how to fit a decoder and how the... Uh, the if you want to get inside the cabin put some figurines in there as well so do feel free to wind it back or at the end of the video um check it out then um jason asking about uh, if the blue bell railway one will come back into stock like we said before just let if you know if that's something you want to see let us know and it, we could consider it for the future um ono uh, asks how many pickups does it have it is pickups on all six wheels so every single wheel has a pickup on there. And you may just be able to see those on the camera there. Might be a bit tricky because they are quite it small. It might but... be a little tricky as they are small and behind the brake shoes, but each wheel you can see there does have a pickup on it. So all wheel pickup making it absolutely perfect for running through some of that tight and tricky point work that the real life locomotives and the models handle so well. I mean, it really was essential that it was able to do that, which is yes. why we did provide it with all wheel pickups. And it does have all wheel drive as well. So hence why it's such a capable runner with loads of, uh, you know, as many wagons or coaches on the back as you, as you require. Certainly. Uh, ooh. Marius again with a tricky question. Ooh. He says, what's your favorite Southern Railway tank engine? It's all about the tanks today. Question answered. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was an easy one, that actually, was an today. Easy one. Thanks, Marius. <laughs> uh, 
Um, Daniel 14 Duxers, do the Picos come with the lamps? They do. They come with a Southern Railway style cosmetic lamp for them, but they also come in the detailing bag, as we mentioned briefly before, the root indicator discs as well. So if you want either a lamp or a disc to hang on the front, they do come with those in the packet. Ready I'll just to use. bring up the buffer beam again for you there. So the lamp brackets are there and it's quite easy to fit the lamps on and uh, the head code discs as well. And yeah, it's quite easy to, to add those on if you want a bit of extra detail. That was one of my favourite parts of this model there. I don't know why it stands out for me, but on that shot you just had, just looking over towards... Oh, the was that the boiler top the, there? The boiler top on there, just the amount of pipe work running from the cab down to the front of the locomotive. Even on a locomotive with such elegant lines, there's still quite a lot of place for a lot of pipe work coming through, and everything picked out in brass there as well. You've got the spectacle plates on the windows, the whistle on top, the pipe work coming out the front of the cab. There's a lot of brass to see there on these locos as well. Quite a little bit of bling really for, a, for an Edwardian locomotive. And at this time in locomotive development, it really was a case of style really was employed. Oh, absolutely. For them, hence the hugely intricate liveries, absolutely covered in brass work and fresh brass, including the domes on a lot of the locomotives. So, it really just does add to that high quality finish, just really makes them I almost quality. do wonder sometimes whether the SCCR was almost a bit disappointed that they designed such an elegant locomotive and it looks so great and it didn't really end up on the frontline passenger services that they intended it for. I almost do feel like they would have been a bit disappointed by that. But, but at but the same time, if you were one of the dock workers and wanted something a little bit bright in your life, well, it doesn't get much brighter than oh, the dome yeah. on a P-class. I'm sure really? they were so absolutely it's... made up getting those, <laughs> weren't they? Um... So, Flying Scott says, it's always good to have more SCCR stock, but I do believe all but the BR and one of the SCCR versions of preserved locomotives, are they not? So, as we touched on a little bit before, a couple of the SCCR ones are the preserved ones, aren't they? The yes. Blue Ball one we've got there, that's a preserved example. Primrose was a preserved example. Yeah, Primrose carried that livery in the 1960s at the formation of the Bluebell Railway. And then also both ROD examples are still with us. And number 5753 did carry that livery about 10 years ago in preservation as well. But in terms of the specific liveries, obviously there are some pre-preservation ones there. So obviously we've got the Southern one, that's as it was with the Southern Railway. We've got Pioneer 2, which is an industrial example. The two rod ones are actually in the the proper World War One condition, Sim and the BR ones to the, too. Similar to the Barclays we um, we viewed on the live stream previously, a lot of these liveries count for both preservation and their working lives as well. You're able to replicate both instances with just one livery. Absolutely. Right, so Jason and Thomas say, I hope I can get the Blue Bell or the BR Black or SCCR Green one. There's like I say, all except Bluebell uh, in stock right now. So if you head to the link in the description, you can find those there. These are the last of what we have. So do strike while it's hot and while they're still available. And we have got low numbers on some of them as well. So as Jack said, get in quick. All right, that's it, get them while they're hot. Uh, Alex Ross Kitchener says, with the recent growth in the O-Gage market, especially with industrial and small locos, is the upscaling of the Picasso or the Andrew Barkley to seven mil something that might be considered for the future? I mean, I... I agree with what's said there, really. The O-Gage market is growing. There's a lot of really nice locomotives available there at the moment. And if you are considering O-Gage, do take a look at our listings. And regards to P and the um, Andrew Barkley, again, as Jack's mentioned before, really, it's get in touch and let us know with your ideas. If you have any particular suggestions about what certain locos to recreate in O-Gage or change scales or any ideas at all for future models developed by Hatton's Originals, just get in touch, either drop us an email or send us a Facebook message. But if you are looking to get started in the O-Gage scene and you are after some smaller locomotives, there's already an amazing selection out there. Is. Obviously, Dapol's brought out, excuse me, brought out the Jinty locomotive. You've had, if you're, if you're a diesel fan, you can get the Class 08. There's a recently announced Class 09 by Gage Master on the way with Dapol. And there's also stuff like the GWR Pannier tanks. There really is loads coming out on the well, O-Gage market, well, isn't your, there? So your favourite's on the way, though. The 14XX oh, coming in O-Gage Couldn't forget well, that, so. could I? So yeah, check out our website for any of that kind of stuff as well. And it's all available to order or pre-order, as the case may be, right now. So if, you, if you're looking to get into smaller O-Gage stuff, plenty to be excited about. Well, Certainly. you know. Right. So 
700 Shunter says, what's your favorite locomotive that was, wow, sorry. I'll have to start again, this is quite a, a good one. <laughs> what is your favorite locomotive that was considered a failure by the respective companies? Mine is the LSWR T14 paddle box. I'm not aware that's, of that. That's not one I've heard of, actually. There's not many locomotives. I'm, I'm almost tempted to give of. this one a Google. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> Let's that, have a look. That might be something we have to check out, that one. But for me, I mean, it's it's hard whether to define a locomotive as a failure or not, because although the P-Class wasn't entirely suitable for its planned duties, they really did come into their own very quickly on shunting duties and on station pilot work, etc. So it's hard to define a failure. Really, there are a lot of locomotives that may have only been around a couple of minutes and disappeared entirely. But at the same time, really, I think I'm going to have to say the P, but with the caveat that the failure was only very brief yeah. for me. So I believe you got a picture up of the T14. I'm just having a look at this T14. That's, that's quite a brute. Actually. It's a that's huge a, thing, isn't it? It's a 460 tender engine. It's that, a that lovely was, looking like thing. A, quite a bizarre design, actually. So yeah, actually. sorry, we, sorry we can't share that with you, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a bit of reading on that later. That that's, looks that's, absolutely that's fascinating. One, that's so. one to open the books on later on. There, Thanks so. very much for letting us know about that one. That'll be mine and Dave's afternoon reading, I think. <laughs> um, in terms of my favourite failure, I'm going to say the APT. I know it's not technically a mm. locomotive, but I just find it's a fascinating concept. It's something that you know was demonised by the press. Some say would, you know, some say quite unfairly demonised by the press. It was quite a remarkably you know built thing for the time in terms of the speed of it all the technology that they crammed in there the comfort stuff like that and the technology did end up in where it was supposed to in the end anyway with the virgin uh, class 390 pendolino which yes. i also love and um you know that so the technology did find its way to the west coast mainline in the end so in a in, in a sense it almost like you say about the p it kind of almost wasn't a failure because it it did provide that yes. legacy to make yeah. it happen in the future Certainly. but uh yeah that I'll, 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 i shan't talk much more about the apt because you won't be able to stop me <laughs> um flying scott he references the t14 paddle box and he says they were great shame there's nothing like that preserved uh, again we're gonna have to have a read about these they sound like something really interesting That's it. um brian pannier says would you consider making a train pack with the rod livery p classes and p possibly the gladiator railgun right that would be an interesting combo wouldn't it now one thing to bear in mind there is one p on its own might not have been able to move the gladiator i don't railgun. think so no so <laughs> if you were thinking along those lines it may be worth looking at the two rod p's for that example now absolutely we've not seen any evidence that they were used with rail guns. they were mainly used for shunting in um, boulogne summer and nice on, on, on the, uh, probably got it wrong but <laughs> used on the dockside there to shunt smaller rates but there's nothing stopping you pairing one up with the gun and we do already do a bundle pack with the p it's not a more of a wartime one but we do do a pack with a br black locomotive and three 16 ton wagons but at the same time as well if you do fancy more of a wartime combination we do sell our own warwell wagons too they're in the hatton's originals range as we can see there and they make a great partner for the rodp as well so if you're after a military setup there with a locomotive and a few wagons you can buy both from our website now and you can you can put your own bundle together they really do look the part those two together just looking at them on our screen now it just looks right doesn't it it does even indeed. though it's such a small loco it just suits it very well it does indeed but as dave says yeah you can get the but if you if you are after a bundle just to buy everything in one go you can check that out on our website right now but if you've got any ideas for something else you'd like to see like like you mentioned with the the uh, rail gun we can definitely consider it perhaps we could make one with the uh, with the wall wells in it at some point I think you want to talk about the instruction I, I manual, do don't want you? to talk about the instruction <laughs> manual. I've been fidgeting with this for a few minutes now, and here it is. I mean, as with the Andrew Barclay, our design engineer, he's really gone to town into making this look something special. I'm, I'm sure these are his favourite parts of any project, putting the paperwork together. I mean, it end. would be mine if I was doing it. It's Make, just so fun. Making that in an Edwardian style there with the new locomotive, full set of handling instructions and operating instructions. You open it up and you immediately start with how to get inside the locomotive to fit a digital decoder, as we covered earlier in the live stream. If you did miss that, do feel free to rewind the live stream and take another look. We do also have a full digital fitting step-by-step -step video guide on our YouTube channel if you click below. And um, if you have a search on our profile, you can find out how to do it. 
And then further on, we have the instructions on how to fit sound as we covered previously. Some of the instructions on how to get in the cab there as well. I believe we were asked before regarding how to get in there. That's all included with the instructions. The instructions also for the detailing parts as to what they are and where to fit them, including those brake pipes and also steam pipes and lamps as mentioned previously. That's all included in the manual as is the warranty information. And that is provided with every single model of the P-Class as well. That comes in the box. Again, like we were saying about the Andrew Barclay last time, that little bit of artwork on the top, it's almost something that might be nice to cut out and potentially frame or yes. have somewhere along your layout, just because it's just an extra little bonus uh, that we like to include with all our models, really. It's just something nice, a, a little extra for you. And if anyone doesn't want a sneak preview of that, it is available on our website listings as well to download, or as said, it does come with every single P-Class model. Right, so we've come up to about the 45 minute mark there. So we've got about 15 minutes left. Um, there's, we've still got a fair few comments to get through anyway, but do feel free to leave any more questions below and we'll try our best to get to them. But remember, if we can't quite get to your comment today, do get in touch with us via Facebook or email over the phones. We've got help desk staff here seven days a week. We're always happy to help with any query, um, but yeah, do get in touch and we can help you out. So, who have we got? Brian Pannier says, is there two different rod variants of the B-Class? There sure is, Brian. There are. Um, I shall put them into our focus camera pop, for you. Put those on show. I believe we might have a, an extra special clip that I can show as well. So there's the two. We've got 5027 and 5753. So if you did want to run two at once, you got a bit of difference there. And like what Dave, Dave was saying about if you did want to run it with a railgun, you probably would need two, and it would and look you, a bit more realistic. And you could just about see there as well the slightly different heights in the cabs and the tanks between the two locomotives. Oh, you really 753 can. having the higher tanks and 5027 having the lower tank variations as well. So it is only a small distance, even in real life, but the model does cater for that. And as Jack mentioned, they're uh, really up close with this more austerity livery, so to speak. It still stands out in that olive green with the bright yellow lettering on there too. So it's just another aspect of the lives of these locomotives. And they really have had quite an adventure for eight small tank locomotives with going to France, not once, but twice. Yeah. They've been all around the southeast. I believe as well in preservation recently they've started to spread the wings further. I understand that some went to the Churnip Valley Railway in Staffordshire and one made it even as far north as the Tanfield Railway near Newcastle. So they really are starting to spread the wings well, they've, now. Well, they've even had the... Um the glory of being part of the National Collection, haven't they? Where they did yes. train rides up and down at the National Railway Museum for quite a while. So they really have spread their, their wings. And that just shows again the versatility of these locomotives, that they're in demand not only from their home bases, but a lot of other preserved railways are asking for them to borrow them and use them for periods. And it's a real opportunity to get a great running loco in real life and in model form Absolutely. into that scenario. And anyone with a preserved railway layout can really get one of these on the go. Absolutely. I like what you said before about even, you know, we've touched on it a couple of times about the ROD livery and some of the other more demure liveries um, still really standing out with the detail. I almost like to see it with the rod one that the P class is wearing a uniform because it went to war. <laughs> so, I like um, the idea there. You actually. know what I mean? <laughs> um, Right, so Evanswood Central says uh, the P-Class is a great little tank engine. He likes it as well as the 57XX Pannier and the LMS Jinty. They're all fantastic locos, mm -hmm. those. Um, ben Davis asks, are we going to make a P-Class in British Royals lettering? I'm not sure if it carried lettering, did it? Or I think one or two of them did. They also carried what's called the Sunshine lettering as well, which right. is the Southern Railway post-war style, rather than the what they call the Egyptian style we see there on number 1555. And again, we are open to ideas on other locomotives to make in the future. All the major liveries have been covered, but there's still a little bit to scratch underneath the surface. A couple of industrial so ones left to do as well. If there's a certain it? number, certain names you'd like to see, do let us know and we can take it into consideration. Um, Jack100 asks, do the lamps come with every single P-Class? They do. The lamps come with every single model. The discs come with every single model. The screw couplings come with every single model. Now, the alternative buffers are only provided with the SCCR models. 
Marius is back again with another tank engine question oh, for us. Okay. He says, what's your favorite LNER tank engine this time? Oh. I'm going to go for the N7. I like the N7. I love an I N7. I really like the N7. It's all the Westinghouse equipment and all the other apparatus on the front it's, that really does it for me. It's similar to the P where it's got a lot of detail on there with all the pipe work, etc. Yeah. And again, we have a double O gauge model available at the moment. It's so. a fantastic model that as well. Oxford Rails model, you can get that on, on our site right now. And it's been in a variety of colour schemes so far. You've got the uh, Northeastern and London Northeastern liveries, and they're coming out with a BR one as well, aren't they? They are indeed. So um, the, it's a fantastic model that, so and a great price too. So do check that out on the website if you're after an LNER tank. Um, Evanswood Central also said his favourite was the N7, so I think we're in good uh, company here. Yeah, we are, yeah. Um, Alex Pomeroy says, Hi, quite, Alex. quite funny to think that there are more liveries available than the actual number of P's built. That is a good point, it, it, actually. It is yeah. a good point. There's more P's here than there ever has been in real life. And there was even more release that we haven't even got on the table, isn't there? So. That's it. We're down to 10 variations now, but we have actually made 16 in total, six of which are now sold out. So as we said before, they are selling quite quick as well. So if you're tempted, don't delay, essentially. That's it. Get them while they're still here. Um, Callum Calvert also asked about if there will be another run of Bluebells in the future. Like we say, you know, let us know if that's something you want and um, we can take that into consideration for the future. Um, Callum also says that he likes the LNER LMS Garrett's. Quite a few Garrett fans here, aren't there as well? Yes, and I mean, well, I mean, we're Garrett fans as well, aren't we? I suppose oh, yeah. with the 00 um, scale model coming back out from Helgen, which was originally in partnership with ourselves, that'll be in in later in the year. And also, we're doing our own in Engage now as well. The Hatton's original LMS Bayer Garrett. We are indeed, and we should have further details on that fairly soon. Hopefully, having CAD images and more to share. So keep an eye out for that. Ooh, this is a really nice question. I like Ooh. this one. Andrew Weaver says, if you could go on any rail journey in the world, where would you go from and to, and what train would you do it on? Oh, That's a lot in I, one question. I think it always has to be, I know I've already done it and it's close to home, but it's the West Highland Railway. Oh, that's a from fantastic Fort, from line. Fort yeah. William to Malague on the Jacobite service. And again, what's not to like about a BR black locomotive with some maroon Mark One coaches behind, really easy to remake, really iconic. It's the route where Harry Potter was filmed with the bridge and the viaduct there as well. So it's so much history, so much scenery. One day, I'll make a model of it. I thought for you, you'd want to have a 37 down there, but... Oh, well, <laughs> mate, if, you, if you're offering, I'd take one, but... Um... <laughs> I think for me, I'm going to stretch my wings a bit further, but I did get a chance to go on one of my all-time dream railways a oh. few months ago. I'm wearing a T-shirt underneath here right now, but I'm not going to start stripping off on camera. Um, that was the Flomsbana Railway in Norway, which is the steepest uh, standard gauge rail line in all of Europe. And right. the scenery on there is just unbelievable and there's even a, I've got a model of a locomotive that was used on there for quite a while right, and it's okay. just I love that place if you if you do get a chance after the video check, uh, check out the Flams Barna Railway online it is just an amazing place but also I'm I, I'm hoping to go on the Aizan Railway in Japan so I think oh, that okay. I think that might have to be my choice for the, the answer to that question. I think I stuck a little close to home in that case, didn't I, really? But there's, there's so many good railways out there to travel there's on. Too there's too many, there's and too, too many to too model, many. too. Too many. Um, Andrew Dyack says, um, can we do a live stream on the Dapol 00 Class 73? Um, yeah, potentially That's, we could take a look because we've just had the new batch in, haven't we? We have. Um, only yesterday, actually, we had the new batch in stock. There's five new liveries that have come out there covering the class from the 1960s right up until the current day. And they, again, they're a really nice model in double O scale there. They've got a lot of details on them, a really powerful chassis capable of hauling quite a lot as well and they're coming at just over 120 pounds i think which you consider for the detail and the amount of running capability you get it's not a bad price really and there was a few unusual liveries that came in this batch wasn't there there is indeed there's um southern railway livery with South gatwick express branding isn't it yes, and then the southwest trains i like that one <laughs> party may do and i mean I think we're in the mood for quirky southern locomotives, really, because the 73 is a quirky southern locomotive. Absolutely. And in front of us here, we've got quirky southern locomotives, again, in a variety of interesting liveries. So weird, and but quite fun to see the little link there between the 73 and the P-Class. There really is, actually. And the fact that 
you know, their original intended purpose, they're not really doing that anymore, and they've kind of spread out all over the place. So That's a good point. We're spotting more links as we go here. A lot now. of connections <laughs> there. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Eversville Central says his fave mixed traffic GWR locos of the Grange in the hall. Very good choices. Mm -hmm. um, Flying Scott says if he has any further questions, um, if he could he contact via email, even if it's not directly related to a purchase, you're very welcome to send any queries whatsoever Absolutely. to our help desk. We've got a full team of uh, people upstairs who are more than happy to answer any question, even if you just got a simple question about one of your models, like how do you fit some detail and parts to it, or a question about a decoder, anything. We've got a help desk team there that's that for that very purpose to answer your questions, even if it's not a purchase you're making. So don't worry about that at all. Um, Blue Belmont Railway says an SECRD class locomotive would be a very nice model to do, such an elegant locomotive. I got a very close look at that recently at the NRM. Ah, and it's yes, it's lovely. in the NRM, isn't it? It's, again, it shares all the livery characteristics of the P class there with the intricate lining and the green, but as said, a 440 tender locomotive with all that detail on it. That's it. Right, we're coming up to the five minute left mark, unfortunately. So really, we're gonna have to start winding down, I think. But if you've got any last minute questions, get those in and we'll see what we can do to answer them. Um, Marius has got another tank engine question for you. Oh. Can okay. you guess which one it is this time? We've had all the big four ones. Oh, let's find out. It's what's your state favorite BR standard tank? Ooh, I think I'm going to have to go for the standard four. Nice. Largest tank there is, the 264 tank engine. Still a few of those aren't in press, you can get on as well. Around. The model's still available as well in double O and N-Gage, actually. You can get a standard four tank at the moment, so they've got to be one of my favorites. Good choice. Um, Tony Daly says, will the new Garrett be an improvement on the last release model? Um, I know the Helgen are making a few changes to this model, aren't they, with so, the new yes. batch? And the one that we're producing in Engage is totally newly produced from the ground up, so it's not really using any previous um, sort of design work, really. So it is completely tooled from the ground up. So both the 001 from Helgen and ours, there will be improvements there. And when they're released as well, and when we've got further updates, we will be producing the usual videos and Facebook post and news on our website, etc. So we'll have all the details to show you as soon as we have them. Excellent. So Neil Golding says, Hi, Neil. Uh, hello, just got home from work and he's watching from Dunkirk, France. Keep up, keep up the good work, guys. Very, very happy with the service. Now that's and delivery is always good, even to France. <laughs> fantastic, glad to hear it. And I mean, the ROD locos there weren't a million miles away from No, not too either, far so. away, so might be a, a potential idea for you there. <laughs> something, to, something to ponder. <laughs> All right, that's it. But yeah, we do pride ourselves on um, postage to both the UK and our overseas uh, postage. So if you go, if you ever want to order anything from us, do pop it in your basket, and then it, the system will generate the postage cost for you. And we do like to pride ourselves in getting them out to you as quickly as possible. And we're just really glad to hear that you've uh, had great service with us. So thanks Thank very much for letting us know, Neil. Thank you. Um, the 700 Shunter asks, what's your favourite fictional livery applied to a loco in preservation? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I'd have to go for the Hogwarts Express livery. Yeah. There, where it was the first time a Great Western locomotive in bright red. But again, it's such an iconic livery now. Everyone knows that's the Hogwarts Castle locomotive. And again, that's coming back into the model range this year. Oh, yeah. With it coming through. They're, out, they're available from Hornby, available to order now, and released later in the year as well. So I'm a big Potter fan. I think I might have to get my hands on the new set <laughs> when it comes in. Um, Andrew Weaver says, if you could see any locomotive made into a charter in Thomas, what would it be? Oh, so a new Tom's character, right, okay. Um, I don't know. I, f I think I'd like to see an IEP in Tom's. <laughs> That's quite a choice. The Intercity Express, a very modern, sleek, new design, changing the services on the island of Sodor. I'd love to see what Thomas had to say about that. I think there's quite a few sort of modern, sleek... Um, units that would make quite a good fit in Thomas. And a few of them, I think, you know, like with the Pendle, you know what, one was already named Penny, wasn't it? So I think you've already got one that's named there. So, and it's got a bit of a characterful face on the front, so. And you're not going to believe this, 
We have Thomas characters in front of us at the moment. We absolutely we do. We do indeed. In one of the Thomas books, Stepney the Bluebell Entrant, the P classes also had a starring role in that book as well. Primrose and Bluebell were both in the book. So P's are already in Thomas the Tank Engine. We've been beaten to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a Thomas modeler, there's even choice for you. And I believe if you did want to add a, a clay sculpted face or something like that, I don't think that would be too well, hard. So to. we'd absolutely love to see that. Right. Unfortunately, I think that's about it for today, guys. We're coming up to the one hour mark now. So just leaves us to say thank you very, very much for joining us once again for all your fantastic questions and points there. We were very excited to show you off this loco today. This is one of the ones I've really been looking forward to. Me I mean, too. I look forward to all of them, but at the same time, this was the one I really wanted to go for. And Hopefully you've just got as much of a flavour as we have regarding the opportunities and possibilities of one of these absolutely fantastic models. Yeah, and like we've said a couple of times, all the ones on the table here, uh, except for Bluebell, obviously, they're available to order right now on our website for £99 each. If you've been tempted by what you've seen in this stream, go and click that link in the description and you can get one right for yourself right now. Or if you want to know a little bit more, we released a new video on a P-Class today, and there is some other P-Class videos on our channel if you want to take a bit more of a look. And there are some excellent uh, reviews by other creators out there if you want a bit of a second opinion. Um, so yeah, I think that's about us. I think that's wrapped up. Right, we will see you guys next time. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for watching, guys.